<laughs> anyway, please start. Good morning, everybody. I am uh, Professor Priyanka Kapoor. I am uh, Professor in Orthodontics in Faculty of Dentistry, Jamia Millia Islamia. And uh, I really feel fortunate to start our virtual study series. I've already given you a video invite. And the same I'm going to repeat. I am formally inviting you all. I thank you all for an overwhelming response. We got to know that we have participants from 11 countries. It is remarkable. It is our first. And we are just trying to make the best use of our lockdown period. I also take this uh, opportunity to just one minute I will take to thank Dr. Aman for all his efforts that he has uh, uh, put in for this uh, presentation. He has been working round the clock for brochure, for registrations, for certificates and much more. I can't even uh, enumerate. And I thank Dr. Deepika, my colleague and my very dear friend for helping him out behind the scenes. And Dr. Pooja Chakravarti for her effort on the feedback form and the quiz that you're going to receive after this uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Why I'm standing in front of you to talk about um, plagiarism today is because of the little uh, experience that I've gained in the past 14 years, ever since I have finished my MDS from All India Institute of Medical Sciences. I have been diligently publishing and doing ethical publishing. I've been learning a lot. We've been lecturing in nationally as well as internationally. And uh, the more we meet people, the more we come to know how less our knowledge is. So we keep on increasing it. But still I say that my knowledge is not complete. My disclaimer is I do not uh, claim that I know everything. I'm so happy so many senior persons I can see here. So after the presentation, I'm sure they'll have a lot to add to what I have spoken. Maybe they can contradict, maybe they can initiate a discussion. That is all that we want. Thank you so much, all of you. Just a brief um, picture of how our team got into B. Dr. Aman, Dr. Dipika, and myself, we've, been, uh, we've, we've joined college together in 2010. And for the past 10 years, we've been uh, publishing together, we've been traveling together, we've been holding workshops, seminars, lectures, and this is the book that we published in 2018. And you can see Bangladesh, I think, Mean, you can see. Uh, sir, you can see. Ah, hello. You know, hello. This is basically I mean, and on the left me. side of the screen. Is. Please it see is. that uh, everybody to point, please. we also share a very good personal camaraderie, not only the professional association. And many of my colleagues, other than Dr. Dipika and Dr. Aman, have also joined. You can see your pictures here. So, Jamia is a nice place to be. So we start with our lecture. We are talking about plagiarism and copying, I think, is the highest form of flattery we've heard a lot. But do you think that applies in the scientific scenario? You'll soon find out. So if you see this picture, this talks a lot. It says that plagiarism is an issue which is smart not only in the scientific domain, but it is marred in every domain where original work is being produced. That domain can be music, can be writing, can be computer programming, can be photography. And if this picture on the right side that you see of uh, Kiara Advani, which uh, got published in 2020 itself in January, and Dabu Ratnani, he came under a lot of flack because uh, he had plagiarized this uh, picture. So, you know, this is one of the original works that can be plagiarized. On the left side, if you see, can you see that picture? You don't like to see on the left side, but yeah, you have to see because that is what is concerning us these days. UGC has actually notified that three major cases of plagiarism in the last three years have actually surfaced from three major uh, universities, government universities all over India. And that is sad. Because one case was so prominent that the person was sent to jail and um, EC of uh, DU University and um, uh, they got plagiarized material from Jamia Millia Islamia itself. The other was a case of Pondicherry VC. Now even the JNU new applicants, they've also got uh, uh, flack because of the plagiarism they have done while they were facing the selection committees. So this is a rampant phenomenon, you see. Whenever I start preparing any lecture of mine, I tend to look at the social networking sites. I don't know whether you are into these social academic networking sites or not, but I'm very active on ResearchGate. 
So anything that you want to scientifically, you want to communicate with the world or you want to learn from the world, these platforms are really good. So I look for questions on a particular topic on ResearchGate. So whatever questions that are put recently, that, has, that is the feel of the scientific um, domain in the current time. So if you can see that in the first question, this guy has asked that is, is it ethical if I write a dissertation for somebody? And can you imagine the person who has asked is a teacher himself? And this was just posted yesterday because I just noted it yesterday. And then another, he's a teacher. And if he's writing a dissertation for somebody, if even, if even he's thinking of it, then what is he going to teach his students? The second is, what would be the fast and the smart strategy for writing a 40,000 word PhD thesis? Now you can imagine what the answers would be. The people have said that if, not, if you've not done anything in the past five years, what are you going to write in one to two months? So what are you going to do? You're going to take the shortcuts. You're going to plagiarize and just finish the thing off. That's not what we intend to do. The third is, what is the best way of removing plagiarism of a research article? The question itself is wrong. You can't remove plagiarism. You don't have to do plagiarism. That is the whole point. That is why today we are all here to look at what are the different types, how can we control, all these things we're going to discuss. And the last is that the case of plagiarism, how shall we proceed when the journal is non-responsive to your reporting? Well, this was a similar question that was asked by Dr. Amin yesterday on the group, that he has noted some kind of plagiarism of his article. Now, what should he do? So we'll be discussing. I also would like to thank a few people who have put queries on the group yesterday and day before. So I've taken up those queries. Dr. Amin has put this query that um, how, how should we report the plagiarism? Dr. Shilpa has, I think, talked about uh, similarity index. Dr. Pooja has talked about paraphrasing, how to do it. And one other uh, researcher has talked about language issues. So we're going to take up all. And one controversial issue of Salami publications also came up. So we will have a healthy discussion about it. So the index comprises of what is plagiarism, copyright, fair use, patent, why do we do it, types, quoting, summarizing, paraphrasing, how to avoid implications, and then a summary. So what is plagiarism? Well, the word itself means, if you go back to the Greek uh, word, then it, it is uh, plagiarism, which is kidnapper. But if you see in the picture, is it possible that you can enter somebody's mind and, you know, take the ideas from them? Yes, it is. You know, there are so many, in the times of lockdown only, can you imagine how many Zoom meetings are carrying on in one hour? You just cannot imagine. The online platform has gone berserk. So the amount of information that is being transferred from one person to so many people, how many of you comprehend it your way and you use it your way is up to you. So yes, there is a continuous transmission of information in the fields of online platforms, conferences that we attend, and we get so many ideas from there. It is up to us to not plagiarize, to not use those ideas. And if we use them, we should acknowledge the original person who had given those ideas. So according to definition, this was an editorial published by Dr. Vijay Mathur. I'm not sure he's here today, but uh, this is a beautiful editorial and I think you should go through it. And it says that uh, the World Association of Medical Editors have given this... Your, uh, your, your paper is not moving. The, it, is, it just shows the uh, plagiarism. What is plagiarism? Uh, your slide has not moved. Yeah, it has moved. moved. It's moved? moved? Okay. Yeah. Uh, how, how I can see the slides? I am unable to see the slides. Not able to see the slide? No, no, no. It's not moving. It is moving. How? I think there must I mean, be some... Connection error, so you're at your side. It's everybody not on else the can screen. see. I'm everybody else can see. Just, the, thumbs up. Can see. just the thumbs up if they are seeing. Everybody is seeing. Yes, yes, we can uh, see. Uh, yes, we I can am see. seeing the yes, faces see. of all. I am seeing the faces of all the participants, but Suresh, not the slides. Yes, I can see the face. Okay. You but can. You have to go to the first page. Okay. Yeah, first page. First page. I clicked. 
first page I click. In fact, on the first page itself, but then. Uh, Priyanka, then you, have you will have to slide. Oh, 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 oh yes, slide. second page. It's not first, it's second. Priyanka, proceed. Okay, okay. Okay, so now I got it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, got it. So when we talk about the definition of World Association of Medical Editors, it says that plagiarism is text plagiarism that I'm talking about. It is repetition of six consecutive words or overlapping of seven to 11 words in a set of 30 words. I think this answers the question that was asked when we talk about the similarity index. The plagiarism software also works on some kind of algorithms where they will place that at least four to six of consecutive words they have to locate to mar it as a similarity index. I think Dr. Shilpa, your question is answered. What is plagiarism? Well, we've talked that it is text plagiarism. You can take some text from some articles and you can use it in your articles and then you can just, you cannot acknowledge the other person and you can just pose that it was your own. So that is text plagiarism, words plagiarism. Ideas, as we've all said, that um, the online platforms these days and the conferences and all where you get ideas, we talked about the ideas plagiarism. Okay, the third is processes. This in the scientific domain is very important because science, when you talk about process, when you talk about any method, science itself says that those methods have to be standardized and the other people have to use it and it should have the same results. It should be reproducible. So if you're using the same methods, the problem is not that, that you're using their methods. The problem is that the, you are not citing them. You are not acknowledging that it was not your method. So processes have a dichotomy. Yes, you can use them, but then you have to properly cite from where it came from. Results, no. It is a complete no. This is a copyright material, any kind of figure, any kind of graph, any kind of results in the form of tables is put. You just cannot use it in your text. It is not your thing. It is a copyright thing. If you have to use it, you have to take the permission from whoever holds it. Right, whether it is the journal or the author or the editor, anywhere you have to write and you have to take the copyright. So, what about the all the free stuff that is put on the web? Can you use it? Yes, you can use it till the time you are properly acknowledging it and citing it. Otherwise, it's not free to use. There are no free lunches in this world. So, this guy is really troubled, you know, he has copied everything from the net and still he's got an F grade, so he doesn't know why it's an F grade. I, at least now you know. So this is, I have been uh, publishing for so long and you people, uh, you know, some of you are in front of me, so I'm just asking, I'm posing, posing a question to you. How many of you feel that uh, insurance... Frank, a problem, Frank, a problem is they will start answering. Please. No, 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 no don't answer. It's a one-sided question, okay. After the lecture, you can answer. So... We all have, okay, I'll, I'll change the form. We all have filled the insurance policies and we have gone through them. Do we, do we actually go through it? No, I don't think so. We just look, look at the whole form and where the sign part is there, we just sign it and we just send it. And that's what we do with the copyright forms when they come attached with the journals. I've been doing it quite a lot of years. Ever since I started reading about plagiarism, yes. Now I've started noting down what is actually written in the copyright form. So it says that once I get published, this is my own uh, article that got published in JFTS last year. And uh, there, uh, when I signed, I came to know that what all rights am I transferring to the editor, to the journal? So I am transferring all the rights to republish the article in part or whole, to produce preprints or reprints, or to translate into any languages other than English. And it can be republished in any collection of articles. I didn't know about that. I never used to read it. It is just a sign and I used to give. No, we don't have to do that. Please be very particular, read through the copyright forms. What all rights are you extending to the journal? In fact, once I get these rights, I have used a flowchart in this particular article. If I have to write any other article on the same topic, I am not allowed to use my own flowchart in the next article. If I have to use that flowchart, I have to ask for permission from the editor itself. So you see, I can't even use my own work, let alone talk about any other's work. So let's talk about copyright. Well, as I said, that it's a bundle of rights that you are giving. So right to reproduce, 
provide derivative works, distribute copies, perform a display. Copyright is not for ideas, but it is legal. So you please don't touch any copyright material. Ideas cannot be copyright, but if based on those ideas, you have created some intellectual property, yes, that is copyright. So we need to identify the two terminologies. So one is moral, which is plagiarism, one is legal, which is copyright. So whatever is legal can put you behind the bars. So please do not touch any copyright material. But there is a gray area where you have your own stuff. Like I said, if I have to use my own flowchart, then a proper, maybe just a mail uh, response from the editor would be fine that I am, uh, I will be able to use that uh, flowchart. So that is a gray area. Fair use is something which is when we talk about it is under the copyright law, but it is slightly more lax. You can use it for academic and the research purpose. There is a certain amount of material that you can use. There is no specific percentage, but it talks about, it basically depends upon what purpose are you going to use that material for. If the purpose is just for education, you're using it for presentations, but properly citing it. I'm not saying just use it, that you have created it. Use it, cite it, but yes, you can use it for your education and research purpose. It depends on four major factors, purpose, nature, amount, and marketing. So amount, it does not have to be the whole thing. It has to be just a part of it. So that's fair use. Patent is definitely a no thing. It is completely intellectual property of the owner who owns that patent and he can make it, use it, sell it, import an invention, modify it, and have some commercial interest in it. The fair use, you cannot use it, you can just use it for education purpose and no commercial interest has to be there. So if we talk about the four, plagiarism is more moral, copyright is legal, punishable, don't touch. Fair use is limited portions can be used for research and education and patent is definitely don't touch. So when we talk about, uh, once we know that, okay, this is what plagiarism means, why do we do it? Academia's why is different from a student's why, okay? So I've classified into two. Academia's why, we all are academicians, faculty, many of us here in this group today. So why would we do it? Well, definitely it's an easy approach. This is a cut-paste uh, generation. It's an online generation. When we used to do our thesis, uh, we just learned computers at that time. So we were not even uh, adept at cut pasting, okay? So that was, that was good in that form because we had to type each thing. So when we have to type each word, why not write it on our own? Now the problem is that everything is online available. Even those things who are not open access, who are not free, the students have actually told me that there's so many sites that you can go through and you can get those free materials. So they have access to almost all scientific literature present on the web. So they use it for their benefit, but I would prefer that they use it actually for their benefit. You use it for reading and then formulating your own ideas and writing on your own, not just cut pasting it. It's easy. Publish or perish, yes, that is a scenario which is very, very rampant these days. Okay, I have a very interesting anecdote to share here. So we were doing a workshop uh, on plagiarism itself in Subharti last year. So when we went there for the workshop, uh, the dean of the university was invited as a chief guest. So before we began the lecture or the workshop, uh, he announced to all his faculty that uh, there is a notification which has come from the university and it says that you need to have one index paper till next year, otherwise no more raise. He announced it just before our workshop. And you can imagine the faces of the faculty. So this is a kind of uh, pressure that the faculty is put under time and again. You know, uh, INSA, you know, everybody knows INSA, that is Indian National Science Academy. They have come up with the kind of a bulletin and they have put forward some proposals they're, they're going to pose to the government also. And they are trying to modify this, that we should not... Um, uh, we should not concentrate on the number of publications. We have to concentrate on the quality. And the quality does not necessarily mean that it has to be published in a year's time, six months' time, because if you have a deadline at, at your head, then definitely you're going to take shortcuts. And that is what leads to plagiarism. 
some people are not comfortable with the language because english is basically not their second language also but majorly indians are comfortable with indian language but i will tell you something uh, i am in a university setup i am very fortunate that we have english department hindi department there and diligent scholars are there who are publishing uh, at a good rate and because if i have a language problem suppose i am i am preparing a kind of a survey and i have to translate it into hindi i would definitely go to the hindi scholar he would do the bit and it would be more professional he may charge he may not charge if he's my colleague he may not charge that's up to him so what we can do is who all we are on in the university setup if you have these language departments with you you can make a group or a kind of a, uh, a scientific platform where you can help each other out and you can also help the students who have language problems but apart from that there are also language editing sites which are available they are paid you can just give them the stuff written in your own language or your own views maybe you have written it in english but it's not that good that also can be improvised but you have to pay for them for students it may not be that uh, viable because they have to pay from their own pockets but faculty definitely you can do it requirement for promotions we've already talked about and not tech savvy that's a major issue now in these days if the faculty is not tech savvy it's not only you who is going to be in a problem you will not be able to guide your students also and the students these days are getting smarter and smarter so regarding any kind of uh, plagiarism issue that you have to nip in the bud you definitely have to uh, become tech savvy you have to uh, catch their uh, plagiarism very early because otherwise if the whole thesis in front of you you can't expect to check each and every word and even if you run through the plagiarism uh, checkers they will not be able to check all the images all the flow charts that you have to do yourself so you have to become tech savvy deficient training in ethical scientific writing yes that is a major issue that we are facing these kind of lectures you know this is i think the first of its kind that we have made in this uh, webinar form more and more such lectures who are focusing more on ethical publishing has to be there and teachers have to be trained regarding it if we are not trained we can't expect us to guide our students regarding it and there is a lack of statutory controls also so we should know if we get a plagiarism issue where should we approach where should we go is a university stringent on these uh, uh, plagiarism issues are they punishable offenses that also has to be under some statutory control students why yes this is a very interesting article by brimble in 2016 he has classified students why into six major categories and um, this one very interesting category which i found here apart from the demographic factors okay they have their language issues age and gender also definitely he has shown that girls are more sincere and they do less plagiarism no offense but he has shown that and there is a cultural acceptance of cheating i don't know how why our society got modified into this how is there a cultural acceptance to cheating you know we are teaching an undergraduate institute and uh, how we take our exams is that the people are the students are sitting you know right next to each other or maybe behind each other so many a times they are students so they try to copy you know from the person who is in front of them whenever i catch them i just go silently to their seat and i tell them okay now that you've copied one paragraph from the person next to you why don't you just quote it why don't why don't you just write a uh, in a bracket you write the person's name because after all he's the owner of these words you're not the owner so that is where at very early stages we have to teach them that cheating is not okay it does not have a cultural acceptance it will never have a cultural acceptance and you know we can do one thing also that um, at very early stages um, we were taking a workshop again in uh, manav rachna on this plagiarism issue and dr shridhar kanan he is heading the department of orthodontics there he mentioned at that time that when he was visiting uh, us um he was visiting his brother there so he noticed that his nephew just 7 years old was submitting something you know paragraph he had to submit and that also had to be seen that it was not plagiarized so there in those developed countries maybe they are uh, putting it forward very early in the child's life 
so that they are inculcated with those values when they grow up they know that they don't have to cheat if not at the student level why then at the postgraduate level there's a lack of knowledge and skills among students and staff as we've talked about you train the teachers and they train the students curriculum design yes that's also one it should not be too heavy and you should not um, basically give them um, impossible deadlines probably uh, like telling them that even in your in your md or mds you have to have one publication before you appear for your uh, exam that's a very tall task because they already are so much uh, worked up with the thesis with the uh, mds work uh, you can't expect them to write a good quality paper before they appear for their exams you can uh, modify that you can just tell them that okay we will not give give you no dues after your exam if you give them a stipulated time three months four months six months that you write that thesis paper in that time but please don't expect them to do before their exam Modern life effect, yes, uh, there is less inclination to prioritize teaching, learning. Well, I think that is on our, on our part inside that we have to change that. When we've talked about why, anything when you talk about why, then it comes to how. So types of plagiarism can be basically two types as we talked, ideas or text. Text can be, yes, unintentional, you don't know about it, and intentional, you very well know about it, you're planning it and you've done it. Unintentional may be wrong citation, you just missed a part and the person is not able to locate the original article. And unintentional can be self-citation, although self-citation can go unintentional as well as, in, as well as intentional. If we understand self-citation, definitely we will not do it intentionally. For intentional, it is missing citation, copy paste, para plagiarism. These are uh, quite related terminologies, patchwork and mosaic, and incorrect paraphrasing. So, this is a very um, recent article in 2019 which has come up. And they have kind of notified, they have studied all the articles in Indian science uh, for the past 10 years, and they have uh, uh, took the retraction data. So, because they had to study what are the causes of retraction, basically. So, plagiarism tops the list. There is no doubt about it. Other thing can also be the duplicate publication or the copyright issue. Even for the copyright issue, they have kind of reported with retractions. You know, they in this article itself, uh, they also have mentioned an incident where a faculty goes to select a particular faculty in a university in India. And there the faculty was ignorant that uh, what to do with the retraction. So his article had already been retracted. And since there is a retraction notice, which is put on the web. So he took it as two publications. One, the, uh, the publication, which was already retracted. And the other was a retraction notice. So can you imagine the kind of ignorance that is prevalent amongst us faculty also? So, you know, we have to change that scene. So copy paste pledge as the word says you just copy over back then and um, okay this is one uh, particular example that I've taken I am an orthodontist I keep on reading my orthodontic articles and th this is this particular article it pertains to retainer so the choice of retainer is being discussed here there is particular retainer which is an age-old retainer and they are just discussing it that that age-old retainer is also good but the new invisible retainer is gaining popularity so this was a study that was done and uh, if I have to write an article now on retainer, so if I try to just copy these words and use it and not cite it, then that is a copy paste plagiarism. Not quote it and not cite it. You have to put it in quotation marks and then cite it. Patchwork plagiarism is that uh, you know you borrow some phrases, you don't use the whole sentence. Like if you see in this particular example only, I just uh, taken off a few um, words I've removed. I've just used some phrases, but mind it, I have not quoted it. I have not cited it. So definitely it is a patchwork plagiarism. Mosaic is that you take two, three, and then you take some phrases from somewhere. You use, you change some words with synonyms. And um, then you feel that, okay, this will not come under similarity index that is also a wrong part and you've not the phrases you've taken again you've not put them into quotation marks and you've not cited that is a mosaic improper paraphrasing 
have phrasing is basically when you're trying to put something in your own words. You're not using the author's words, but you're using it. You are just putting it into your own words. That is paraphrasing. But you paraphrase it and then you have to cite it. That is the proper way. But if you paraphrase this, you don't cite it. That is also improper. And if you just take the sentence structure to be same, and you just change a few words with synonyms or the tenses, that is also improper paraphrasing. That is, again, plagiarism. You know, there are, uh, since the people who plagiarize are getting smarter, the algorithms are also getting smarter. As I was reading, I came to know that they're coming up with algorithms which are going to study the author's writing style. So you take anything from anywhere, you try to change, you try to jumble up the words, you try to use synonyms, but if the author's writing style is copied, you're going to get into trouble. Unintentional, as I said, incorrect or self-plagiarism. Oops, I didn't do it. Look at the right side. It is also unpardonable. Whether you've done it intentionally or unintentionally, it is unpardonable. Self-plagiarism, when we talk about it is basically when we are trying to recycle some text of our own articles and in the next forthcoming articles, we are trying to put that text as new. We are not citing the previous article. We're just saying it's a new text that we have put. That's also wrong. Whether you had written it for the previous article on your own, it doesn't justify that you use it without citation of the previous article. I'll give you an example. I have been publishing a lot in biological mediators and orthodontics. My thesis topic was also interleukin 1 beta, so I got interested in it. So the first article I published was on cytokines in orthodontic tooth movement, a systematic review got published in 2014. Then I started gearing myself up for study of enzymes. Now, if I am doing the same thing, I am doing a systematic review on biological mediator, whether the mediator is different. How much am I allowed to take from my previous text? I can just take a certain part of methodology, nothing more, nothing less. So I have to see that even if I am working in the same domain, I am working time and again on the same topic. I am not allowed to use even my material from the previous publications and use it as my own, not citing the previous article. That we have to be very clear. Duplicate or redundant publication. Well, some of people, some of the people are even more, uh, they go, you know, even ahead than that. So not only text recycling, what they do is that they will duplicate a uh, major part, three-fourth of the part of the publication, and then they pose, uh, pose it as new, or they publish it in some other language. Even that is not allowed. If you have to publish in some other language, then also you have to take the permission or it has to be in cognizance with the editor of the previous journal where you published it. So you just cannot do it. And COPE guidelines are very, very stringent on uh, these duplicate or redundant publications. And that is where we came to know that there's some new kids in the block. So these are basically contract cheating. This has come up uh, recently in scientific publishing. There's only one article that I could find of 2018. People are trying to work on it. But if you look at this, what it is, you can find it in every nook and corner of our homes. I'll tell you how. So if you have small kids at home and they get uh, uh, an assignment or a project for the holidays, the summer holidays, so what you do? There's a science project, there's an English project, there's a Hindi project. You just go to a shop nearby and they have, I don't know how they have, they have all the ready-made projects available. You just pay them and you just get them. That is what contract cheating is. When it comes in the scientific domain, you pay somebody, you don't pay somebody, but some third person is writing that thing for you and you have not contributed anything, that is contract cheating. That is, I think, when you uh, think the first slide that I had shown that there was one, uh, the first question that talked about, can I write a dissertation for my students? He is not getting paid for it, but that is still contract cheating. New kids are on the block are also clone, control C, find a place, remix, recycle. These are turn it in, how they categorize the severity of how you have plagiarized. 
So clone, control C, find, replace, remix, recycle, hybrid, mashup. 404 error. This we've already talked the first seven. This is basically in the categorization of uh, copy paste, patchwork, mosaic. We've already talked. There is this 404 error where it talks about the inaccurate or non existent references. So you just cannot go back to any reference. Uh, you have uh, cited that reference, but you just cannot go back to it because, because either it is non existent or it, uh, it is inaccurate. And this aggregator, this is very important. So where I've always, I've been talking about for so long and I've been telling you that you have to put it in quotes, you have to cite. Can you put everything from, you can take one stuff from here, one stuff from there, and then you can just, you know, make your own article. Can you do that? Is your article going to comprise of all the quotations and all the citations with no or minimal original work from your side? Is it allowed? No only 20% that is also maximum that you can use the quotations in your whole article probably one or two quotes in one page that is the whole that is the maximum that you can do retweet is that you have used a citation but then you are too closely following the sentence structure that's also not allowed so what is the correct uh, way correct way is uh, paraphrasing summarizing, quoting, and referencing. So this we have to learn. Paraphrase, as I said, is we've been taking workshops actually. It requires workshops because it needs you to practice doing that paraphrasing yourself. So we have to uh, know what are the correct ways of doing a paraphrasing. So you read something, you read a particular sentence, you want, you want to use it in your particular article. So what you're going to do is, you're going to read that paragraph, then you're going to keep it, then you are going to note the keywords in that paragraph that are important keywords, just note it down. Just keep it aside. You formulate your own sentence on that keyword. Now you go back to the original work, and you see if you have missed any important information. If you've not missed any important information, then you just cite it and you're done. How easy it is, but then it has to be done diligently every time. Why do we paraphrase? You know, it's important for understanding. You, when you copy paste what you're doing, you're just, you know, copying one paragraph, you're just putting it somewhere. But when you paraphrase, you read it, you understand it, you put it away, you use the keywords to formulate your own sentences, your understanding about the subject is amazing in that. You make a more meaningful presentation also because once you understand the concept, you will have a more meaningful uh, expression of your thoughts. And it becomes short because you will not use all the, make all the complete lines of that particular author and it will also provide a research review. So do it yourself. Basically, this is for the workshop, but uh, I'm just trying to tell you the same example I've taken here. I have highlighted the keywords. Now, based on those keywords, I have to formulate my own sentence here. I will not look at this line after that and I will formulate my own. Then I will again look back and see if I haven't missed any important information. Then I will cite and I'll be okay. So read the keywords are this. You keep it away, you either write or you can also speak. You can change the ten, uh, tense, you can use synonyms, antonyms, phrases. And then you go back, you see if you haven't missed any important information, then you cite and then you're okay. I'm going to repeat this process again and again in my presentation because this is the crux of not doing plagiarism. You know, you don't remove plagiarism, you just don't do it. So this was the correct paraphrasing. A survey conducted in the United States of America showed Holly's retainer to be still most uh, preferable mode of retention, though the trend indicated a decrease in its use while the use of invisible retainers was on the rise. Summarizing is basically giving a gist of the whole information. So it is a very simple sentence that I've used. Popularity was decreasing while the other was increasing. And quoting Quoting is basically verbatim if I'm taking some phrases from somewhere or the whole sentence from somewhere. Probably we use it majorly in the definitions part. So then I have to quote it and I have to also cite it. There is something called block quotations also. That will uh, be done only when you have 
sentences which are increasing the length of four written uh, uh, full length sentences in an A4 size document, then you can use block, size, block quotations for that. Some tools are present, again, as it's an online era, so people, before you start working, people are there to help you. But please, I would say that for the students who are starting to write, please do not take this help. Please try and do things on your own because all these uh, uh, people who are, whom you are paying to do these paraphrasing, they will not get the understanding, the gist of what you have read. So please, as I have said, you just read it, take out the keywords, put it away, write your own sentence, look back and see if you haven't missed any information, you cite it and then you are good to go. Why reference? Okay, I am, I'm used to, uh, you know, reading comics also. So you have read the story where you put breadcrumbs and uh, somebody comes and, you know, they just eat away the breadcrumbs. So these two kids, they are not able to go back home. So the referencing is the same. Why do we do reference? Because we want to go back to where the idea originated. Who was the original author of that particular thought? We need to know. And if we have no breadcrumbs, if we have given incorrect uh, reference or a missing reference, or we have not referenced at all, then where are we going to go? We will have no home to go back. There are different referencing styles and uh, majorly they are broadly classified into two elements. One is bibliographic, one is punctuation. And we basically for medical sciences, we follow the Vancouver style, but AP and MLA are also being used. AP is basically for psychology and MLA for humanities. You know, they work on different uh, principles. Because it is psychology, they feel the author is, uh, um, because it's psychology, they feel the year is important and humanities people feel the author is more important. So we'll discuss it briefly, but otherwise referencing, if you have to take, it's a completely different topic altogether. So when we talk about the, as I said, there are two elements. One is bibliographic, one is punctuation. So when we talk about the Vancouver style, the bibliographic elements will have ATJ DVP as the mnemonic. A would mean the author, T would mean the title, J would mean the name of the journal, D would mean the date or the year. V is volume and P is the page number. And also we do not have to use the full names of the journals. We have to abbreviate it. It has to be abbreviated only according to the NLM catalog, which is the National Library of Medicine. And you can get it online for all the articles. The author's surname has to be first and then the initials. And after three names or six names also, you can add it all. In-text citation, you can give in parentheses or superscripts, you can do it anyway. The only thing I want to mention here is sometimes students get confused. This is a basic style. This A to J DVP is the basic Vancouver style. Some journals, what they do is, they will try to personalize this. Some journals will tell you that you need to put the name of the journal in italics or underline it or you know, bold it, anything. That is just for personalization. But the basic structure will always remain A to J DVP. So that you have to remember. Punctuation, yes, we all know that separating the name of the authors by a comma, then a full stop after the journal name, then semicolon and colon, then full stop. So that we have to uh, follow. The other important thing is in APA, as we talked about, it talks about the psychology. The year along with the page number is important because it's important in which year the results were published because their theories also keep on changing with year. So th for them, the year is more important, but in humanities, who has said it is more important. So the author comes first. Important in referencing is also that it is our responsibility as an author to check that whatever references we are using are not retracted. So we have to look for retraction online before we take any uh, article as our reference. And I've also said that we have to abbreviate it according to Medline. How do we stop it? Now we've completed what, why, and how. Now, how do we stop it? So basically, plagiarism issue is being shared by research, pedagogy, and administration. And they overlap each other. They have to work hand in hand to counter this menace of plagiarism. Pedagogy, why? Because what we teach our students will only get imbibed in them. Yes, they have brains of their own, but 
we make them use it in a proper way. Administration, yes, how, uh, how stringent they are with the rulings and are they, uh, are they taking it as punishable offenses? What are they going to do if somebody reports plagiarism to them? That is in the administration part and research part, yes, we as academicians, we are supposed to not plagiarize our stuff and teach the same to our students. Tips to prevent habits of making notes. There is no shortcut. There is no shortcut. You have to make notes. You have to write it in your own words. Publish or perish, as I said, that is also very prevalent. And we have to, I, I already gave some of the ideas that we can do. And this INSA, if these guidelines come up where they will be giving weightage to the quality of the journals rather than the quantity of the journals, I think that will be a breather for us because uh, then we would not be targeting on publishing number of publications in a particular year. We will be taking time to publish good amount of research work without having to worry about the plagiarism because we have time not to plagiarize. Otherwise, for the students who are about to start publishing, I would recommend these are the few tips that you start with very easy formats like the letter to the editors or the short communications. Once you're comfortable with them and you have got them published, please go to the original articles, the complete articles. And as I said, that publishing before your MDS exam will not be, not, not be that good an option. Scared of deadlines. Yes, you can manage that. How you can manage? In a thesis, I've done it myself. I was in love with my thesis topic. So before I got to my second year, I had already completed my introduction part. I was reading so much about it. So there is no problem. You are reading, you can take down the notes and you can just reference it at that time so that when you are into the process of final writing of thesis, you will not be pressurized to write the whole thesis like the second question of ours, where he said that he has not done anything in five years. Now he wants to write a PhD thesis of 40,000 words in one to two months. It's not possible. Review of literature also can be written in your own words and you do not have to wait for the final thesis writing time, that is your third year, to write the review of literature. You can do it very well uh, in the first year or the second year itself. And it has to be in your own. Here, I just want to point out one thing. I've been taking lectures on thesis roadblocks also. And I've noticed one thing. When thesis comes to us for evaluation, it is a very rampant practice. What you do in review of literature, you just take an abstract, you cut it, you paste it, you cut it, you paste it, and your review of literature is ready. Is that the correct way? No, you have to write it in your own words. Are you even aware that the thesis that you are publishing are a very good amount of gray literature for your national level, uh, maybe any kind of uh, association that we put? So we are putting these um, norms that if we have some national level database where we can get all the gray literature pertaining to the thesis from all the universities, well, that would be a good idea. And once that gets, uh, that sees the light, I think all your plagiarized stuff is also going to get online. So please, I'm telling you, do not plagiarize even while writing your review of literature. That gray literature is equally important as the published literature. So please do not plagiarize even in that. Guides have to have access to the anti-plagiarism softwares. There can be various issues regarding to that, the cost factor, because all the free anti-plagiarism softwares, they're not that diligent, they're not that good because they don't scan the whole of the net for it. But if you have to pay a lot, then I think the university should take up that onus and they have to pay for good quality uh, anti-plagiarism softwares. They can be turned in, authenticate. They are good uh, softwares and we should be using them um, often. And you can check for me metadata and watermarking I have one more slide on it so I'll be taking up there and stringent action on defaulters yes only with the stick can the students know that it is a fault tech savvy yes we have to get tech savvy and there I have already mentioned tools are present online for paraphrasing you have pledges and check softwares like uh, authenticate turn it in cross check you have referencing softwares yes for the students and the faculty both these softwares are really, really good. They are very important that we become uh, savvy in them. They are Zotero, Mendeley, they're all free softwares. Professional language editing sites also, I've just given a link and you, you can just go through online search for it. 
one very important practice of predatory journals you can see these days you open up your mail and you will see a lot of mails starting with dear dr priyanka kapoor we came through this article of yours and we would like you to publish in this journal then you will see that this journal the the journal which has sent you invite has not uh, is not listed anywhere the indexing even if it has indexing it is not listed anywhere in co a anywhere and the name of the journal be very similar to a very established journal so it confuse you so please and there is no peer review process in this they will just tell you okay you send us the article and we publish it in 15 days they just bothered about the money please don't fall into the trap of these predatory journals there is a list of predatory journals also you can just go through online do not fall into the trap instead of raising your academic output it is going to deem you in any kind of selection committee that you sit these kind of journals they do not hold any value please let me be very clear uh, dr amns uh, uh, this article also i had shared a few days back and he has besides all these points he had also quoted that uh, you can give the proof check you can give to the reputed research background colleagues or peers and you should not be submitting it to different journals because they are they can be considered as duplicate publications and the copyright issues as i've already discussed and the cover letter plagiarism blow this was one of the questions that came up so if you find a plagiarism you are a whistle blower if you want to report it but you should because any plagiarized article that remains in the scientific domain is going to pollute science and we as researchers it is our moral and ethical responsibility to stop any kind of pollution of science so please if you get to know of any kind of plagiarism please you have to get back to the particular journal to the editor you have to write if the mails do not get re responded then the scope has a particular flow chart that they can follow they have repeated mailing system then they also classify it on the basis of how much of plagiarism is there how much of similarity index is there if it is uh, uh, not too much they can still give a warning to the uh, authors and they can leave the authors but if it is too much then they will be writing to all the um, all the co-authors also and they will be retracting the publication and it will be put online domain as a retracted publication so you know you have to report and uh, i have taken this flow chart with due uh, permission from cope i had written a mail to them and when in they gave me although this is under creative commons license that we are free to use it for education purpose but we have to if you can see on the left side i have put the site's name also so we have to acknowledge them and we can use it for education purpose but no commercial purpose should be involved so this is a mail copy that i have put just emphasizing that whatever you use please use it with the proper channel how does the check work it works on the similarity index this is the report that comes up if you can see on the left side 41% similarity index and it means that these different colors are shown because uh, they are taken from different um, articles so you can just go back to these articles and 2% is taken from this 3% from that so the total similarity index is 41 very bad article anti plagiarism tools it not only checks the word similarity index it can also do a reverse image search or checking of metadata so what is a metadata so whenever the uh, pictures are put to you you can just do a right click and you will come to know what are the specifications from which camera it was taken which year it was taken so uh, the guides the pg guides can actually face this as a lot of uh, issue because uh, suppose a pg is coming to you in 2020 and showing you a picture which is dating back to 2012 you definitely know that he has plagiarized it he has not taken it ethically and also if it is from some other camera he doesn't have that camera you know you can check for metadata so these are the two publications that i would like to mention one is dr amans one is mine and uh, we've also talked about the dw chrome guidelines of how much of image manipulation is permissible how much is not permissible you can just go through these articles and you will come to know we don't have time to discuss everything in detail consequences okay on whistle blower also there is a consequence you will get an immediate stress these are very recent articles that i'm quoting so you can just see that uh, there is a lot of stress that uh, builds up in a whistle blower's mind also and if it's a student teacher relationship that gets spoiled because then you will not be trusting the child and your uh, 
um, normal pedagogical relationship is going to suffer. So you have to be very clear that either in the stern words you can tell the student, but that can only be done in the beginning. If you've already published it and then a problem crops up, then you have to face the consequences. On the plagiarist, yes, there are legal implications because uh, now UGC has also come up in 2018 itself. It has come up with the guidelines. And if you see, the level zero is up to 10% of similarity. Now, they don't consider references in the similarity, let me tell you. And uh, apart from that, 10% is allowed. So Dr. Shilpa, even if you have a similarity of 10%, as you asked, this, there will be no penalty. But 10 to 40 percent, yes, the student will have to revise and the teacher will have to withdraw the manuscript. 40 to 60 percent, the student is debarred from submitting a revised script and the teachers cannot supervise any PhD candidate. And above 60 percent, faculty is suspended or dismissed. Just a moment, just a moment before you start with the summary. Uh, oh, wait, uh, wait, wait, one minute, one thing. I have uh, one more, um, I think one controversial thing was about Salami publications. So I would just like to mention that I've been reading a lot and it comes under uh, the self-plagiarism, under the category of self-plagiarism in few articles. Although there is no clear distinction, but it definitely talks about data fragmentation, how the data gets fragmented into multiple publications. That is uh, taken as plagiarism. Because if it is data aggregation or subtraction, or it is fragmentation. All these three categories will be taken as self-plagiarism. In your further articles, if you want to segregate the data and publish it as separate uh, articles. Now, some authors or some researchers have this view that this data segregation becomes important when the data is too much for one article to handle. So they feel that if you segregate into different uh, publications, then the reader will be able to comprehend it uh, more. But some others they feel that if you're using the same samples you're using the same methodology using all the same criteria, just segregating the results is not enough justification for data fragmentation so there it comes into a, a kind of a question mark so how cope has taken it he will uh, if you uh, if you go through the guidelines of the flow chart they will say that they will take it as a duplicate publication only if there is a certain amount, even in data fragmentation, if certain amount of overlap it is exceeding, only then it will take it as uh, plagiarism, otherwise not. So okay. that is the whole issue that has just been discussed. Uh, Dr. Pranka, just a moment. I would like to uh, put a good news here that something good is happening. Uh, we, had, uh, we had around 114 people waiting and uh, it, we have 84 people logged in right now. And uh, Zoom has been kind enough to increase our uh, uh, increase our limit of 40 minutes, 45 minutes to uh, uh, more. So you you guys can really continue uh, learning more. Dr. Priyanka, you can continue. Well, because um, I thought that we are sticking to the time, but uh, it's that we can have the discussion. Actually, I am waiting. There's so many senior people here. I can see Dr. Adarsh here. I can see so many senior people here. I would like them to comment on whatever knowledge I have given. Maybe I, I totally claim that it's not, it's not complete in any way. And I would really like their inputs on it. Any uh, kind we, of we views it, that we have. And we yeah. do it. I unmute uh, everyone after you finish. Okay. So we just go through the summary. So this is a whole chart that I have prepared based on whatever knowledge I've gathered in this particular publication, in this particular presentation, also deals with the six major points. What is plagiarism? Why do we do plagiarism? What are the types of plagiarism? How to avoid limitations and Im implications of plagiarism? So we've already discussed this in detail. So, but this particular chart will give you everything at one go. So you just look at it and you will know what all is important in plagiarism, what all issues are important in plagiarism. And even the definitions of paraphrasing, summarizing, quoting are given. Limitations definitely we have not um, discussed in detail, but I would like to say that uh, the cost factor is a major limitation for some of the researchers and the universities because they have to pay a lot to get the good anti-plagiarism softwares. The e-resources also, you know, we have to make them available to the students to use so that they don't use any uh, shady sites for it. And uh, 
while there are no specific guidelines actually the cope also does not have any specific uh, guidelines for it but we need to have some standardized guidelines that the plaque check has to be applied whenever you submit the article not after the article gets published you know retraction is a very big it's a very big thing so you know all this if you want to if you want to just go through i'll just have it one minute on the board and you can just see that uh, everything that we've talked about for the past one hour is present in this particular slide so I am, I'll just put it here and yeah. I, I suppose everybody has taken a screenshot by now. <laughs> and I can use it for uh, study purposes, for education purposes and presentation purposes, but I can't use it in text. If I want to use it in for, for further articles of mine on the same topic, I can't do that. So I have to be very clear on the plagiarism guidelines. Thank you so much. This is my bibliography. Okay. Hi, Aman. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, uh, before we, uh, before we uh, uh, conclude, I would like to uh, say uh, a big thank you to uh, the speaker of the day today for uh, uh, putting up, summarizing it, uh, the the menace of plagiarism, plagiarism, very uh, very briefly, and uh, we face it so very often. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Goria for uh, giving a platform uh, from INPEFO and uh, Professor Emilio for AFOHR, uh, myself and President uh, Dr. Jasuja and uh, President-elect Dr. Neeraj Grover for IACFI. And uh, uh, thank you to uh, the co-host, Dr. Deepika. You can imagine, even she is outside waiting. She is, my, uh, she is our co-host and she's waiting outside. Can you imagine? And then uh, Pooja Chakravarti, who is uh, managing a quiz, you get the quiz immediately after you uh, lock down. Uh, there will be a quiz which will be shot at your email ID. Uh, you should uh, keep in mind whatever uh, lecture we are going through, whatever lectures we are organizing, will be a weekly or a or a routinely process. Next on the line will be a lecture on uh, Imrad. If you know. I am. I am. Uh, I should not be introducing because my co-host co is actually taking that lecture. That is, uh, Dr. Dipika will be taking that lecture on Imrad. That is very close to us. That is introduction. Uh, uh, we have uh, material and method. Then we have results and discussion. That's what is the uh, uh, the structuring we do for any article. And mind you, I used to do it for years, but I did not know it is actually very very algorithm. Again, everything works on algorithm. What comes first? What comes afterward? What exactly goes on? How to write? How to write a global perspective and then going to tapering it to a national level and then to a state level, then coming to your own problem. That is how uh, tapering it is. So we have. I'm introducing you to a lecture which will be happening next time. That will be Imrad. That will be decoding Imrad. Will be our next agenda. It, it happens on Bezakhi. That is on 13th. We, we go live streaming and mind you, there was a hick. There are people, 114, I have to answer 114 people, why are they waiting outside? So uh, I, 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 I take the onus, I am new to it. I, the, these platforms are new to me. 100 was promised, but then uh, Zoom kind of updates it, upgrades it on its own, which it did not. It upgraded only the timing, did not upgrade the number of people. I can't help it. I had given a disclaimer right before the start of the lecture that there can be a trouble. Even I was kicked out of the thing. You you know I came five, seven minutes, minutes late. Now, uh, to add to it, I should keep you uh, updated. We are open to collaborations. We are open to people who are working uh, uh, the, pad, the, the, the innovative way of teaching, the, the topics which students are of uh, concern uh, for everyone. I have uh, contacted various academicians and I, I am sure that we like-minded people are going to come up we are ready to host you. We are ready to, because the platforms are going to change. We, are, we will be going to Google meeting. We will be going to uh, WebEx. 
various platforms we might use but then what exactly is required is the enthusiasm of 200 people of 13 countries which joined today i'm thankful to each one of them and i'm really sorry people who have been outside uh, waiting for this i will update i will upload this this youtube live as soon as possible I will I will put this on YouTube as soon as possible. Please give me time. And about the certificates, please. We have 200 people. I am a single person uh, arranging the certificates. Please, please wait for it. Maybe uh, 24 hours or maybe uh, uh, two days. You will get the certificates at your email or whatever means I can. Now the platform is open. You have to raise your hand if you want to talk. We have 10 minutes of discussion. Okay. Uh, we go. Uh, I knew the first person will be. Uh, the person whom I am unmuting right now. Go ahead, sir. Is that me? Is, uh, Is that I, I, Adarsh, Dr. Adarsh. I will, I will put you, sir. Next. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Aman. And uh, firstly, I must congratulate the whole, entire team of Jamia, led by uh, you people, Priyanka and Dr. Deepika, for taking this initiative, especially during this period of lockdown. When everybody, all of us are almost locked down, this is the best way to utilize, uh, you can say, our time in doing some kind of academic activities. And this is one of the topic and must congratulate you for taking this topic, especially when we talk about the publication business in India. It's extremely pathetic. The, the, the points uh, which Priyanka has raised in her presentation are very pertinent. Everybody knows that. And I think we need to work a lot on all these issues, especially the younger generation. And yes, so many things she has pointed out very correctly. I must congratulate her for bringing out this to some of the concepts. Even uh, I was listening, even I was not aware, like this mosaic and all those things, the terminology, terminology, because sometimes we are using some other kind of terminology, but yes, that's good. One question uh, for Priyanka, because this uh, we faced a little bit uh, because we are talking, discussing about plagiarism and dot. See, suppose some one book is there that has been written by some author 50 years ago, right? Now, one now the, this current generation is there, and now the publisher has asked that okay, now that book's book needs to be edited in the current perspective. So one more author is added to that, and now that author edits that book. Right. And then he cites, uh, he takes some text from here, there, tables from some other book, or some other concurrent book, like which are published during this current, you can say, last decade or so. Then he has copied those tables and those figures from that book. Right. The first author, the, the author of that book complains that this is the plagiarism and you have cited that text and you have not acknowledged and you have just copied it from my book. Now the first author says in his defense that, okay, in fact, what you have cited, that you have also copied it from some other book published 30, 40 years back. So now this all becomes very much complicated. So who is at fault, whether the first author, the first book, the second book, or the defense that whatever literature published 50 years ago, because there are certain guidelines, I, I can remember probably 50 or 60 years, if it says that, okay, if the publication is sir, more than 50 sir, years, uh, the, published, the publication was more than 50 years ago, you sir, need not be south, uh, you need not would, cite I, that I would, actual reference and you can cite the, the reference wherever it is cited in the next, you can say, the, publication. I would, I would put the speaker online now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. Sir, actually, I if I get your problem right... You have to stop uh, your screen I, share. You have to stop your screen share. If you want to talk. Okay. How do we go? Okay, you are there. Go ahead. So uh, you are talking about the the uh, the book that the other author the other author who was added he kind of plagiarized the stuff into the new book, right? That's what you are you are saying. So uh, who is at fault? 
I think plagiarism in any way is at fault. And if he has taken some um, flowcharts, some tables, as you're saying, first of all, it would become a copyright issue. And before getting published, they all are partners to the crime now. It's not only one author who is at fault now. If that book goes under the scanner and somebody puts a plagiarism row there, copyright infringement there, because that is also one kind of uh, plagiarism. If the copyright infringement is also there, then all the authors of that current edition can go under scan. Sir, sir, sir. That's what I have. Sir, I would like to, uh, uh, I would like to, because it's a book which is happening and I have a little experience on book writing. So uh, just keep in mind what exactly happening is there is that you have signed a copyright form, a copyright transfer form to the book publisher. You will not be sued till the time the publisher is sleeping. The publisher is sleeping. There is no commercial interest. All 50 years, 70 years, no problem. Moment they come to know that there is money involved. You had intention of publishing for money. Then the problem starts. You might not see, you can, uh, uh, you can mudsling on each other. No problem. Then, uh, you know, academic, in academic world, we keep on mud, mudslinging on each other. No problem. But when it comes to money involved, Definitely, there will be change of thing because the publisher has a interest of commercialization, and you have uh, you have infringed that. You are in trouble only when you have infringed that. Until unless you are not touching that, mind you, you might uh, keep on fighting, but it will not lead to anything. I'm unmute, unmuting. Understand? You. Unmuting. Yeah. So what what I could understand is that uh, in that case. The complainant should be the publisher and not the exactly. author. In fact, exactly. it is the author of the book exactly. because he has exactly. already have transferred his copyright to the publisher. You have, you have given it. You have given it to him. So, Actually, so who, who will initiate the complaint? The, initi the initiation, entire thing is in hands of the publisher whom you gave it. Publisher. Publisher, not the author. No, 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 no. no. The, uh, uh, it, is, so, it is like, you know, Hindi, Hindi we say, Aapon, you know, how, how are you? Uh, bothered you have sold it off right so even even i have written the book and because since i have given the uh, copyright transfer to the publisher but then even i myself being the author cannot initiate the complaint complaint yes. and all yes. so yes. it is the publisher who can only do it yes yes you cannot take an action you can write you can uh, you can initiate on public platform you can't make a complaint, yeah. but you, you cannot take any complaining action. but nothing will happen no, no initiation of legal thing will happen till you because you had already sold it off you had a motive of earning 10 percent two percent of the royalty which you are getting yes so you have already given it to the yes. publisher so you cannot initiate now uh sir if it is right. it has solved your problem we we move to doc, uh, dr uh, nasimul yes 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 please please okay. thank you priyanka and aman for your wonderful arrangement i would like i, I would not take much time i just want to know is there any issue in uh, of plagiarism in oral presentation. Suppose I take some of your uh, information <laughs> from your slide and present. And is there any uh, issue? Put her, put any her photo. Put her photo. <laughs> no, I'm asking uh, uh, Priyanka. Okay. Is there any issue or not? Because daily life, daily life, we present, uh, we give our lecture here and there. Sometimes same lecture. Sometimes we do not refer. No, is there any issue on plag of plagiarism on oral presentation? Actually, until you are citing it properly, you are acknowledging the person who was the originator of the thought. I don't think that's an issue, but you cannot use that slide and pose it as your own. That's the only issue. No, 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 no. That is, that is, that is not. That is okay. not. But, you know, it, it means so can, that we can, we, we just... For you, education purposes, we're using, no? We can use it, huh? Okay. Uh, uh -huh. You are using it for education purpose. You can cite it and you can use it. That's not a problem. Hmm. Okay, we have next one uh, uh, stepping in. We have uh, Dr. Ranjit. He's, he's only on audio, I guess. Uh, so we will hear only uh, uh, his, uh, his concern on audio. Dr. Ranjit, please go ahead. I unmute you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Can you be a little yes, loud? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, audible, audible. Yeah. 
So yes, thank you, Dr. Dr. Priyanka, ma'am, and uh, Dr. Kaman sir for organizing such a wonderful lecture. So I have one suggestion instead of going to the meeting because meeting has the limitation of the hundred participants in the free for forty-five minutes, and it's uh, consequently to increase for the more time. We can arrange a webinar, convert this Zoom into the webinar. Webinar have the limitation of five hundred participants, and in webinar we can see the videos of organizer, co-host, uh, and the panelist, but not the participant. and uh, by that way we can increase more and more participation when uh, in a free we can uh, like uh, add more than 500 participant in one go so, uh, that is our suggestion uh, in a next lecture you can go instead of meeting you can convert it into the webinar on the zoom platform itself and if you need any help i am uh, ready to help you yes and second i have one question uh, uh, one question from the priyanka ma'am uh, which is the best plagiarism uh, like tools either is orkon or the turnitin out of two priyanka go ahead priyanka go ahead If my voice is not audible to Priyanka, ma'am, Aman sir, you can answer either is Urkund or is Saturnitin. Which one is the best? See, uh, see, you are asking me which eye is better, which eye of mine is better. See, uh, yes. The, the the thing which I want to highlight here is that you know, uh, for, as a as a teacher, as a student, which uh, as a teacher when student comes uh, with an assignment to me, uh, keep in mind that you know uh, uh, you have to be very 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 uh, suspicious nowadays because it is very tempting. to really cut paste nowadays very very tempting people are uh, pe people are people start with wikipedia uh, to search and they keep on cut pasting and mind you the algorithm which is there the algorithm is very very intelligent very intelli see it might uh, give you a similarity index you might catch but what about i'm sorry i got logged out you are i got logged out okay okay madam madam yes. uh, uh, dr 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 ranjit is asking a question okay okay hello डॉक्टर रंजीत हेलो यस डॉक्टर रंजीत कैन यू रिपीट अगेन हेलो या मैडम आई वाज आस्किंग व्हिच वन इज द बेस्ट टूल टर्निटिन और द ओरकुंड और टर्निटिन यू सेड टर्निटिन और ओरकुंड व्हिच इज द बेटर वन शी इज आस्किंग मी व्हिच डेफिनेटली टर्निटिन डेफिनेटली टर्निटिन देयर इज नो क्वेश्चन अबाउट But Our authenticate is also good. Uh, UGC is promoting Arkun to the all the universities. They are providing yes. and all department to the Arkun. I think. I think. I think. So? I mean, in our university also, they have put Arkun yes. only yes. now. Yes. Yes. But but we've been using both, and uh, there is a lot of difference in the results that we get. We get more similarity index because they are searching more publications in Turnitin. Probably. Uh, i think it has to do something with the cost issue also because turnitin is quite costly and the annual subscription was getting too much for the universities and basically ugc is also promoting the sorkun version but it is not as uh, uh, sensitive as uh, turnitin that's what i feel okay. uh, using both of them okay thank you okay uh, uh, i have i have one more person uh, logging in this will be I, this will be the last question actually for the day uh, we call it we we call it off uh, after this uh, i have a doctor i think uh, uh, who has written me dr shivani has written me dr shivani yes dr shivani i unmute you i i don't think so it's a suggestion it is it is uh, more of a uh, i think she is saying excellent i am sorry she is saying she is praising actually if it was not a question so uh, we we close down and uh, thank you everybody for logging in and please do respond to the mail which you get thank you very much thank you sir much